What's up, video? What's up, video? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll start over. No, I won't. Screw it. Uh, what's up, people? So this video is going to have sort of two parts. The first is going to be sharing my squat session, which is uh, I'm trying a Steinborn squat here with 40 kilos. And this is like kind of hard, actually. And my plan was to do Steinborn squats so that I could squat heavy. But I immediately realized that I was not going to be able to go heavy. I was not going to be able to get, you know, 90, 100 or more kilos on my back in this position. So I did a few reps. This is just 40 kilos. Um, but I quickly realized that I was not going to be able to go as heavy as I had planned. So I, I you know, switched it up and you'll see what I do later. But I also want to talk about Ronnie Coleman. Uh, he was recently on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, which I am a fan of. I don't agree with all of Joe's political views, but I really do think it is an excellent podcast, and I do watch it on a fairly regular basis. And you can see the people in the background are like, what is he doing? <laughs> so basically what I did is I set it up between an incline press and a bench press. Now, for those of you who are saying this is unsafe, it's unsafe compared to a power rack, but this gym does not have a power rack, obviously. If it did have one, I would just be using that. They have two Smith machines, two leg extensions, and no power rack set up. The messed up thing is, they have a power rack in storage. They just decided not to set it up. They decided not to set up literally the most important piece of equipment. This is just mind boggling. And all of the trainer's response is just like, the boss said that we should not do this. So this is almost like a statement from me saying, okay, if you don't want to set this up, I'm just going to do it myself. So I warmed up. This is 60 kilos, just, you know, doing some reps, not maxing out at all, just sort of getting back into the habit of heavy squatting. Uh, these are the heaviest squats that I've done in uh, months since maybe like January. So uh, I'm not going super heavy. I'm just uh, sort of just getting back in the feeling of putting heavier weight on my back. But I want to speak first about Ronnie Coleman. So he again, he was recently on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, and it was an hour and a half long, and I really, really enjoyed it. I watched every minute of it. It really was excellent. You know how sometimes you watch a video, it's really long, and afterwards you're like, why did I do that? That was a waste of time. This is not one of those cases. It really was excellent. Uh, it felt like a lot shorter time than it actually was. It was very entertaining and also very useful. And that's what I'll talk about today, the useful information that I garnered from it. The biggest thing was injury. So Ronnie Coleman, he was famous for lifting really, really heavy, you know, 800 pound squats, 800 pound deadlifts, 500 pound bench presses for reps, all for reps, and really just training very, very hard, close to failure, super heavy, just getting amped up and going for it. And I respect the hell out of that. Uh, I think he was just an absolute beast. And I love seeing people train like that. It's just really inspiring and really motivating. However, I think this is also a good time to look at the effects, to look at what actually happened afterwards. Ronnie Coleman has had 13 surgeries after his career. So soon after his career finished, he started getting surgeries and he's basically had them ever since. Every single one of his discs has herniated except for one. Uh, and that one that wasn't herniated actually was recently herniated and he'll be having surgery on that one as well. So he's had 13 surgeries in all uh, from his hips. His, his, his hips have been replaced with that, which I think is mostly genetic, but still the heavy lifting no doubt had something to do with it. Uh, all of his discs, his neck, his whole spine is fused. And, you know, this is mostly from the heavy lifting, the hard training, as well as perhaps not great technique. So your technique is very important. And also very important is listening to your body. So Ronnie Coleman talked about how you're always in pain if you're a professional athlete. And I don't entirely agree with this. I don't think you need to necessarily, you know, sacrifice your body for the cause. I don't think that's necessary in most cases. I think if he had trained a little bit more responsibly, a little bit more intelligently, he still could have been eight-time Mr. Olympia, you know? 
uh, but he could have been not in a wheelchair. He could have been not in crutches. He could have still been able to walk at this point. He talks about how he felt a disc herniate in his back. He felt it pop during a heavy set of squats using 600 pounds. He then proceeded to also do heavy leg press and other exercises afterwards. If you feel something like that, you're done. You're done for the day, go home, maybe even just go to the hospital. If you feel something actually pop audibly and you feel it in your back, you're done, okay? He also talked about how he had pain in his back every single workout for years. You have to realize that pain is something that's actually quite interesting. Um, it's obviously not good, but it is interesting. It's obviously a perception, so it's just in your mind. And sometimes you can have tissue damage with no pain. Uh, most elderly people have just a messed up spine. If you look at their spines under uh, an MRI, a lot of them have tons of herniated discs, but zero symptoms, just no symptoms at all, and their spine is just like degraded. On the other hand, uh, you can have pain and very little damage. So it can go both ways. But generally speaking, I would say pain and uh, problems are gonna go together. So if you're getting pain, you really do need to listen to your body. And don't just tell it to, you know, be quiet or, you know, stop talking to me. <laughs> um, but you need to actually address that because pain is almost always a problem. Also know what you can do. Um, if you are getting uh, a lot of flexion in the bottom of a deadlift or something, um, if you're getting a huge amount of butt wink in the bottom of a squat, I'm getting a little bit, as you can see, um, but there's no pain and a little bit of butt wink isn't a huge problem. But if you're getting like massively rounded over during a low bar squat, you know, that is something that could cause injury, especially if it's causing pain. And you should not take pain for granted. You should not say, oh, I'm training hard, I'm a professional athlete, and therefore, of course, I will be in pain. I think that sets you up for a mentality that while admirable, you know, I push through pain, I train harder, train harder, train harder than last time, I think that sets yourself up for doing things that you potentially regret. Ronnie Coleman says that the only thing he regrets is not training heavier, not training harder. And I think this somewhat sends the wrong message. Um, you know, maybe if you're a professional athlete, but if you're just a normal person, you should not train through pain. If you get pain, just stop, okay? Reassess, look at your technique, look at the loading, uh, look at your programming, your training, and try to solve the problem immediately, like right away, as soon as you can. And I would say the number one area is gonna be your technique. So you can see on this rep, it wasn't a perfect rep, but it also wasn't that bad. And I can know, you know which positions that I can get in for me personally and still be fine. So this is something that you need to find out for yourself by a little bit of trial and error. I'm not saying like always push harder and harder and harder until you get injured. Uh, but I am saying that you need to listen to your body because it will give you feedback. It will tell you what you can and cannot do. Now, is this criticizing Ronnie Coleman? Yes, a little bit, just because I think he's sending the wrong message to a lot of people. Um, you know, he trained really hard. And, you know, deep down, I think he probably does regret it. I think he, you know, would prefer to walk, would prefer not to have dozens of surgeries. Um, and I think most people really should take the mentality of training more responsibly, not less responsibly. Training hard is important, but training smart really is going to be what gives you results in the long term, uh, especially after, you know, 10 years. 15 years, 20 years, uh, he still lifts, that's the thing. He's still lifting, and I think he's still causing damage to his body. So even if he hasn't really learned from his own mistakes, uh, I think other people can. And so I think it's important to you know, see what he's doing, see why it happened, note that you probably don't want that to happen for yourself, and make the necessary adjustments. I myself have noticed that I've become 
a little more risk averse than I used to be. Uh, if you look at my technique on squats, maybe I'll, I'll you know, put a blurb on the video or something. I used to have much worse form. I used to basically good morning my squats. As you can maybe see, my strength is my spinal erectors, my lower back. And so I would basically shoot my hips back and basically good morning the weight up. And I think that can cause a lot of problems. And I don't think it's a very smart way to train. But I didn't really care. Honestly, I was just... I didn't really know that much about technique. I didn't know much about injury. I had never gotten injured. And so I just wanted to get the weight up. And because of my leverages, I have pretty uh, long femurs. Uh, because of my muscular strengths, again, my spinal erectors are uh, overdeveloped, I, you know, I could say. Uh, that was the most efficient way to just get the weight up. But just getting the weight up is almost never the right decision. And so since then, in the past couple of years, I've really cleaned up my form. I've really sort of stepped back and I've addressed what do I want? Do I want to lift this weight today or do I want to be healthy for a long time? It takes thousands of reps to make you, but it only takes one rep to break you. And, you know, we're seeing someone who is broken from not just one rep, but a lot of poor reps. So make sure you focus on the process, focus on your technique, and don't get messed up. Assess how risk averse you are. Do you really just not give a damn? Or do you really care about your body? And I've, again, I've sort of stepped back and I've said, you know, okay, I'm an online personal trainer. Uh, a lot of people, not a lot, but more and more are watching my technique and I owe it to people to use better technique than I've been using. And if I get injured, it looks pretty bad on me. It looks pretty stupid. And plus, if I'm injured, I can't improve. I can't get better. It gets harder to put out videos. And so for me, I've become less risk averse over time. And I've noticed this is the same with a lot of uh, fitness YouTubers. They become less risk averse, or uh, more risk averse, I should say, over time. It's also worth noting that everyone has their own problem areas. Ronnie Coleman, he squatted 800 pounds, he's done 2300 pounds on the leg press, but his knees are fine. Zero problems at all. So he obviously has pretty strong knees, but his lower back, hips, spine, and neck are maybe more prone to injury. And you don't really know where you're going to get injured or where you're not going to get injured. So uh, I would say it's better to play it safe. For me, I have a very, very strong lower back. Um, and as you can see, my tendency is to use it, to use my strength. But I do know that if I use my lower back too much, that will get injured, for sure. Uh, I've never had a lower back injury, but I've also read enough and studied enough and watched enough videos to know that if I get a large amount of spinal flexion in that L5, S1 region, I'm not special, okay? It will still herniate like anyone else. So, you know, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, but realize that you can still get injured, basically anywhere. On the other hand, playing devil's advocate, don't train like a pussy, okay? Don't be so afraid of injury that you don't push close to failure, especially on like isolation movements or safer exercises. You shouldn't fail squats, I'd say for most people, uh, but you can also push them really hard. And if you're always training at like an RPE 2 or negative 18, you're not going to get results. So, you know, really pick where you want to be on your risk aversion. Train hard, but also train smart. That's where you're going to get the best gains in the long term. Now, they also talked about a bunch of other stuff. They talked about his policing. They talked about his job, about like just him relaxing, uh, about his off-season stuff, about his body fat percentage. He said he was 0.33% body fat. Obviously, that, that's not true. He said he was negative body fat percentage. That's obviously not true, uh, unless, you know, it was antimatter or something. But I don't think we have the technology to sort of detect that yet. Um, antimatter gains, the, the key to making progress. Um, he also talked about how he's 3% body fat in the off-season. Obviously also not true. I think he was using underwater weighing or calipers, which can't, you know, always be as accurate. 
uh, they can actually give you a negative reading based on the formula, but it's not true. It's not accurate. They also talked about his special sports supplements usage, as the Russians say, and he said that he was natural up until around 30 years old, and he already had his pro card. Uh, he looked amazing uh, at that time. He was about 90 to 95 kilos, I believe, on stage. And honestly, this is about a 27 FFMI. This is ridiculously big, especially when that lean. But we're talking about someone with the best genetics of all time. So I think it's sort of plausible. I'm about 90 to 92 kilos and a little bit taller than him. Obviously not as lean. But to me, it's plausible that someone with the best genetics of all time could be, you know, just 5 to 10 kilos more of muscle. To me, that makes sense. And if you look at when he cycled, when he went on gear, he went up like 40 kilos. So, you know, to me, it's plausible. I wrote a post about this on Quora a few months ago, and I was basically ridiculed for even thinking that Ronnie Coleman might be natural early in his career. But I think, you know, it, it makes sense given all of the information. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Uh, it helps the algorithm and it can start a good discussion. Also, like the video, that seems to help as well. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed for some reason. Why would that happen? Uh, stay safe wherever you are, and I will see you next time.